Oh. Oh my gosh, okay. One-on-one <laughs> -on -one confrontations, what goes up must come down, and the things that go boom. Today, we are breaking down and reacting to all of the action-packed medical scenes and damaging injuries from the stealth action video game, Metal Gear Solid. Let's dive right in. Oh! The most common that occur with blast injuries are typically like an eardrum rupture. The eardrum actually pops. Typically when that happens, it's a lot of pain. They're highly innervated. There's lots of nerves. And sometimes you can have some bleeding. Most of the time these will heal on their own. If they don't, you can have something called a tympanoplasty done where they actually use fascia and make a new eardrum. Completed your objective. Now get out of the hot zone. Shot to the knee, lateral aspect. We see some slow-mo blood splatter. There's some major blood vessels behind the knee that run. So your femoral artery is in your groin and then it traverses back behind the femur and then goes into the popliteal fossa, which is basically the space behind the knee. If you hit that, you can actually cause a lot of bleeding. Oh, we get crushed by the car. So you don't see too many people getting cars landing on them. More often than we see people who get hit by cars and there's a lot of trauma that occurs to that. Fractures, dislocations, hematomas, contusions, intracranial bleeding, and unfortunately, uh, people succumb to a lot of these injuries. If you're inside a vehicle and it flips over, bounces around and you're not seat belted, I've seen lots of people come in that they've been thrown to the car. They were found 100 feet, 200 feet from the wreckage wearing an eye patch. We actually end up putting eye patches on people in the emergency department. We refer to the eyeball itself as the globe. Sometimes if there's a globe injury, if somebody has like an arc burn and there's a lot of inflammation to the eye, we actually want their eye to remain shut. So we'll give them an eye patch. Oh, come on. Come on. Different objects do fall from buildings. You gotta be really careful when you're in a major city and there's construction around, things can fall and things from that height could actually land and kill somebody. Now getting crushed like this, obviously we worry about fractures, crush injuries, dislocations. And a lot of times if it's that heavy of a weight and it hits you, there's not much to do. Oh. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> Fire. Fire. Fire injuries we see very often. We actually, thank goodness, don't see anybody that comes in on fire in the emergency department, but we see clothes that might be melted to the skin. We see people have significant amount of blisters. You know, in a weird way, pain to a burn area is actually a good thing. That means you still have nerve receptors to that area. I don't want my pain taken away. I need my pain. Oh, right side of the neck. A couple different things that could happen here. You can use the blade to lacerate the carotid artery or jugular vein. The jugular vein is about twice the size and diameter of the carotid. Different individuals have different sizes and it also has to do with hydration status. If you're more hydrated, the jugular vein will actually be bigger just because you have more volume. Fire. Whoa, pretty good shot. Head injury. Boom, If somebody's typically healthy, you can actually have the body still be alive, but without any brain function if it's hit in a certain area. Obviously, we know that our brain does a lot of different things and different areas of the brain have different roles. If you miss certain areas of the brain, you'll still be able to have those functioning. Jumps out of this like two-story lookout, no problem. Doesn't even do like the parkour, like fall and roll. Parkour! You can press this down and then stays low. Pretty impressive. Obviously, if you have good mechanics and you've done it before, your body can handle it. I've said multiple times, three times your height, it's a major trauma. Now, I'm not saying a major trauma occurs. If you injure yourself, significant injuries could occur. Oof. A single punch to somebody's face, knocking them out, that could happen. You increase the risk of breaking your own hand as well as somebody's facial bones when you do that. You have a higher risk of fracturing your fourth and fifth metacarpal, AKA boxer's fracture. I've seen people come into the emergency department and a month later, they're like, oh yeah, I punched the wall and now my hand hurts a little bit. And you look and it's already had a fracture. So if people can handle the pain, you worry about functionality thereafter. <laughs> what? 
When people get burn injuries like that, the biggest thing you worry about outside of the burn itself is the hypoxia, the asphyxiation, to where you're not actually able to get air in. The air is being taken away basically by the surrounding fires. And then the other is you're breathing in smoke and you're breathing in the heat and the flames are potentially with that, meaning they're burning the mucosal membranes, the inside. Oh, there again, same. Whoa, it looked like the blade was placed quite anterior. So right down midline. There are blood vessels there. The bigger blood vessels are actually more lateral. There is a blood vessel that does sit on that area that can cause significant amount of bleeding, but typically not as much bleeding as that depicted. If that happens to you, please compress the area as best you can. Hell. What? What? It depicted electrical energy, or it looked like somebody was being electrocuted or hit by lightning. People usually get hit with AC current, alternating current versus DC current, direct current. Direct current's like a, a lightning bolt versus AC current's usually more like appliances. It causes flexion injuries, so you actually flex on and hold. It also causes burning to the tissue and travel through your nerves. The thing we worry about is that it actually hits your heart, causing heart arrhythmias, dysrhythmias, and go into cardiac arrest. Whoa, that was cool. We see animal bites often in the emergency department. Animal bites are dirty wounds with punctures. We typically treat them with prophylactic antibiotics. If there's a lot of tissue destruction, just depends. Sometimes you need to go to the operating rooms, get it washed out and partially closed. If there's puncture wounds, we try to clean them out as best as possible. You leave them open to allow any type of microorganisms to flow out versus lock them in when you suture them closed. Another topic to bring up is rabies. Obviously, if you get rabies and it's not treated, you're going to die. Rabies are more often skunks, foxes, those types of size animals, not typically super small and not super large. People come in a lot of time with stray dog bites and are worried about rabies. Typically in the United States, that doesn't occur. You can get a rabies vaccination, which typically four shots. Oh, another burn injury. Burn! I don't know what type of clothing they have in this game, but it goes up immediately in flame. Pretty sure military clothing does not go up in flame super easy. Correct me if I'm wrong out there. Once it does go, stop, drop, and roll. Pat it out. Anything you can to get the flames to stop. Obviously, if you have wounds, cover them up. If it's not an open wound and the underlying tissue is not exposed, you don't need to do anything. But if it's open, it's not necessarily infected yet, so you don't necessarily need to put topical antibiotic ointment on it, but you do need to put hydrating ointment on the tissue to help it heal faster. Metal Gear Solid, cool game actually. I really enjoyed the graphics. There are definitely medical scenes that are good to talk about what occurs and then what would actually happen and what you would do in a situation where you might have access to medical care. So if you guys enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.